Hey guys, I hope you had a good E3 this year. I enjoyed it. It wasn't crazy, but I certainly found it fun. Um, now that E3's wrapping up, I thought I might go over games that I thought were worth noting. If you didn't watch all the E3 conferences, maybe there will be something here that piques your curiosity, or maybe, if you know me, you just want to hear what games I thought were interesting in an easily digestible manner. Um, I've split these games up into different tiers based on my interest, um, so hopefully that will help you gauge whether maybe, oh, this game is definitely worth checking out, better get this one right away, or maybe, uh, better wait, just, you know, just keep an eye on it, see, see what develops before the game's release. Um, with that said, thank you for watching my video, and I hope you enjoy. These are games that vaguely captured my attention, but may or may not ultimately be for me. The Outer Worlds looks like Fallout. I've never played Fallout because it looks too scary for me, but I really enjoy Elder Scrolls games, so depending on how scary this game is, maybe I would enjoy it too. The concept for this game is great, but I'm just not really into stealth games. If you like stealth games and are looking for something interesting, El Hijo is a really cool creative direction. The trailer and gameplay for Watch Dogs Legion were really boring for me, but I feel this game is worth a mention because its central premise of being able to recruit and play as any NPC in the entire game is really interesting. There aren't many games where you can play as the elderly. I just don't care much for MMORPGs, and especially not ones that require a subscription. My friend likes Final Fantasy XIV though, and I had fun trying it out, so if it ever becomes free to play, I would be interested in this expansion. These are games that grabbed my attention, but that I would need some more information about before I can actually decide whether I want them or not. Spiritfarer has an interesting visual style, and I liked some of what I saw. Anthropomorphic deer are always a nice plus two. However, there was not a lot of information about what you actually do in the game, so it could wind up rather boring for my tastes. I have a friend who has said good things about Fantasy Star's GameCube entry, but beyond that I know next to nothing about Sega's MMO. The trailer for Fantasy Star Online 2 looked intriguing, but for all I know this could just be another dull MMORPG. The visual similarities between Ubisoft's God and Monsters and Nintendo's Breath of the Wild are striking, to say the least. Based on a small trailer, this looks like Breath of the Wild, but Greek and with better visuals. I love Greek mythology, so I'm very interested, but we do not know enough about the game for me to say whether it's worth owning yet. I know next to nothing about the Life is Strange series other than that it is popular. The trailer for Life is Strange 2 used some textbook tactics to force the audience to be interested, but it worked on me. I'm interested. But I need to know what the actual gameplay is like. I love how 16-bit RPGs look, and Romancing Saga 3 is no exception. Square and Enix 16-bit RPGs are especially good and worth playing, but I've not heard much about Romancing Saga 3, so I need to know more before I can say this is worth paying attention to. These games won my attention with their trailers, but there's enough risk of them being duds that I would wait for the reviews and see what they say before making a purchase. Jedi Fallen Order was a pass for me until they revealed that the game's combat was partly inspired by The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, which is currently my favorite game of all time. That, combined with inspiration from Dark Souls, was enough to make this highly intriguing. Sadly, Scumbag EA is behind the wheels on this one, so I suggest waiting to see if they screw it up. 12 Minutes has a very interesting Groundhog's Day premise. It immediately grabs you, to a point where it doesn't matter what the gameplay will be like, you know it will be investing. What matters here is the production quality, so wait for reviews. The Tales series is very popular and at least partially features the music composer behind Mario Golf, Golden Sun, and Dark Souls. That is literally all I know about the franchise. However, its popular pedigree tells me I'm missing out on something. So I've been looking for an excuse to check out the series. 
if Tales of Arise is as good as the trailer suggests, I may have a lot of fun with this one. Telling Lies bills itself as an open world game. The developers really hyped up that premise, which is very interesting because if you look at this trailer footage, this is not the type of game you would normally expect to be open world. The idea of a completely new and innovative approach to open world gameplay is enough to have my attention. But as with 12 minutes, the game seems so experimental that I would wait for reviews. Genesis Noir is a detective game set during the Big Bang. The visuals of this game are so impressive, and the concept is so crazy. I just have to see how this game plays. Just like the previous two indie games, though, there's a real risk of the premise being better than the actual game. I would wait for reviews, but this looks very promising. My search for a game that is like Dark Souls but not scary continues. Code Vein looks like it could be a lot of fun, and the people excited for it are really excited for it. I would want to wait just so that I can see if A, the game isn't too scary, and B, the game is of good quality. Final Fantasy VII is a hugely popular game in an accredited franchise. I fully intend on playing it. The question now though is, do I play the original or play the remake? The remake looks cool, but Square Enix has been struggling to make games that live up to their series pedigree of late, so I think it may be best to wait for the reviews. If this game is just as good, if not better, than the original, I'd go for it. If it's substantially worse, I'll just play the PlayStation 1 version instead. Normally, I don't care for games as a service style games, but Thor looked really fun to play as in Squeenix's Avengers game. If they were to add other Marvel heroes like Mr. Fantastic or Doctor Strange, I would be really excited. The game could just be another terrible AAA Western game though, so I would wait for reviews. Last month, I started playing through Secret of Mana on my SNES Classic. While fun, it was also way too grindy for me. I've heard that Trial of Mana is less grindy and overall better, so I'm very excited that it's finally headed westward. Unfortunately, Square Enix did a very poor job remaking Secret of Mana last year, so I would wait for the reviews before deciding whether to buy this remake or to get the collection of Mana that was just released on the Nintendo Switch. As a teacher, the fact that Fire Emblem Three Houses is focused around a school gets me really excited. Last year, I played through Fire Emblem Awakening and loved it! Unfortunately, I was very underwhelmed by the gameplay footage that we saw last year of Three Houses, so I will wait for my brother's opinion, he knows a lot about Fire Emblem, much more than I do, about Three Houses before I decide to get it. Astral Chain is made by Platinum, the people behind Okami and Nier Automata, among others, so it immediately had my attention when it was revealed earlier this year. I liked everything I saw of it at E3 this year, but I still have a nagging feeling that it just won't be for me. Best to wait for reviews for this one. These games are games that I definitely know that I want, but ones that I'm okay waiting for in order to get a discount on. I love Age of Empires 2. It's one of my favorite PC games of all time. A remake of the game with a remastered soundtrack is very exciting. However, the actual game looks a lot like the already remastered version that's on Steam, which is kind of a bummer. There doesn't seem to be much of a good reason to pick the definitive edition up for full price when the remastered version does the job just fine. Final Fantasy VIII is one of my friend's favorite Final Fantasy game, and it's the first Final Fantasy game I ever played, even though I didn't even finish Disc 1. What kept me from finishing the game was its highly pixelated graphics on the PS3. Lame, I know. I'm excited to dive into this game again with clean visuals this time, but I'm in no rush, so I can wait until it's on sale. I've been intrigued by the Panzer Dragoon series ever since I first played the Panzer Dragoon track in Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed. The remake, announced during Nintendo's digital event, is of a game from back in the days when Sega was reliably good, so I expect a fun game with a cool premise and a great soundtrack. 
It doesn't look like the games end all games though, so I don't need it now. Nino Kuni is a beautiful game with a great soundtrack, fantastic character design, penny pinching salesmen, and shitty party members. I played through quite a bit of it on the PS3 but could never finish it. I'd love to hop into it again, or its sequel for that matter, but since I already own the first game, I think it's best to wait for a sale. The real question is what system to buy it on. These are games that I knew would be good the instant I saw them. They are, in my opinion, the most exciting titles at E3 this year, and I cannot wait to get my hands on them. Every Metroid fan should get out there and play Ori and the Blind Forest, because it's amazing. It's not nearly as good as Metroid games themselves, but it's a great experience from start to finish, and I recommend it to pretty much everybody. Ori and the Will of the Wisps looks like it will be even better. This was one of my most anticipated games of the year, so I was really sad to see it as being delayed to 2020. I cannot wait for this game. The original Psychonauts was a lot of fun and incredibly creative. The Pajama Sam, Invader Zim loving child in me cannot wait for another opportunity to hop into the warped and twisted minds of the people in the world of Psychonauts. Psychonauts 2 is sure to be a great experience and I highly anticipate its release. While I'm not excessively crazy about LEGO Star Wars, the first two games were fun and a great way to revisit George Lucas' films. My wife, however, holds LEGO Star Wars among her favorite video games of all time, so I'm very excited for her and I can't wait to play through the remade Skywalker saga together. Ghibli-esque, atmospheric, spooky, and with gear to boot, my eyes were glued to the screen for the entirety of Way to the Woods trailer. The music was stunning, too. This game looks like it'll be an incredible experience. I can't wait for a game where you can run around as a deer like this. 2020 cannot come soon enough. Way to the Woods is definitely one of the games I am most excited for out of all the games at E3 this year. I have my reservations about Luigi's Mansion 3 because it seems that, once again, Portrait Ghosts will be skipping the game. But I'm very excited to be wandering a giant spooky building once again. This game looks to be a great hit and a perfect game for an October release. In my opinion, the original Link's Awakening has the greatest story of any video game I've played. I cannot wait to dive into the dark, tragic, surreal world of Link's Awakening again, even though I don't really care for the visuals this time around. The cherry on top of the sundae is the dungeon creator, which looks like oodles of fun and is something we Zelda fans have been wanting for a long time. Technically, I may not buy Cadence of Hyrule Day 1 because I'm trying to focus on non-Switch games right now, but I will be playing it next month for sure. As a music lover, I can't wait to put my rhythm skills to the test in Hyrule. Everything about the new Animal Crossing New Horizons trailer was amazing, except for the awful gut punch at the end where they reveal the game to be delayed until 2020. Ah! Oh! Anyway, this game feels like such a natural extension of the city planning work you do in New Leaf. I can already tell I'll be sinking hours into this game. Now, I may finally be able to put a big Dimetrodon fossil by the beach and watch the sun set with it. I was already screaming and frothing at the mouth from the amazing reveal of Banjo and Kazooie for Smash Ultimate, but then Nintendo's CEO whispered those magical words. Before we end this direct, I actually have one more thing to show you. And then this trailer hit. I really expected the next Zelda game to be a 2D one while they worked on Breath of the Wild's sequel, but clearly that's not the case. It's happening! History is repeating itself, and we're getting the Majora's Mask to Breath of the Wild's Ocarina of Time. The premise introduced by this short trailer looks phenomenal. It looks like Zelda may even be playable for once. This, for me, was the most exciting thing at E3 this year. I can't wait to learn more. So those were the games that got me most excited at E3. It was a pretty decent conference, it wasn't crazy, um, but it was fun. I 
especially enjoyed Nintendo's uh, digital event and Microsoft's conference. Square Enix's was pretty good too. Hated Ubisoft's. Um, didn't even watch Bethesda's. It didn't have anything for me anyway, so it doesn't really matter. There were some other uh, highlights from E3. I was going ballistic with the reveal of Banjo and Kazooie as a DLC character in Smash. Absolutely ballistic. Um, in the days since E3, or since that presentation, I've actually gotten pretty excited about Dragon Quest XI. Um, I've been looking for something to use my voucher on to go with Super Mario Maker 2. Um, speaking of which, I'm really excited for Super Mario Maker 2, but it's it wasn't really shown at the digital event, so I'm not really going to talk about it. Same with uh, some stuff like a, a Hollow Knight sequel, which I only really just found about today. Found out about today. I'm extremely excited for it. Um, and uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield, which I was excited for. Uh, if you're a Pokemon fan like me, as of recording this on the 13th of June, oh, we. Po the Pokemon fandom's in a meltdown right now. Let's not talk much about that. Um, well, I hope you guys enjoyed E3. I hope uh, if you didn't watch the E3 conferences or only watched a couple of them, maybe you saw a game on this list that uh, is one that you didn't hear of and you can get excited about too. As for me, uh, this summer, well, this month I'm going to be, I'm still playing through Kingdom Hearts 2 and... I can't stream it, but I'm actually playing through The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword again um, at the same time. And then next month I'm going to hop back into Switch games. I've been putting off Switch games since I'm traveling all next month, so I might as well just play them then. Well, I hope you have an amazing rest of the day. Uh, for some people watching, good luck with finals, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.